Today is a new day. Doesn't matter what you've done, the Lord can forgive you. God wants to change our hearts before he changes our circumstances. I believe that God is gonna bring peace in a broken world through you. Good morning, dear friends. Welcome to the Our Power and thanks for your support to us. Dear friends of Our Power, good morning. It's time again for our 2024 Hong Kong special, Leap Forward Hong Kong. This year, we have invited many good friends for interview, including the pastors who have served in the marketplace for many years. The pastor who serves both youth and evangelistic ministry. The pastor who serves single parent. Also my friends in the marketplace. I believe that through their sharing can encourage you all a positive life and can learn the trust in the Lord in your life so that you can live abundantly. Through their interviews, you will see when they encounter difficulties and challenges, they can leap forward in their lives. More importantly, they rely on the words of God. Fix their eyes on Jesus. We wish that this Our Power special can be a help for you and me. God bless you. Our Power 2024 Hong Kong special, Leap Forward Hong Kong. Our guests for this year, Reverend Dr. Joshua Chen, the General Secretary of Hong Kong Gospel Festival. Ms. Lucilla Leung, the former headmistress of St. Paul's Co-Educational College Primary School. Reverend Nan Chi Ying, Honorary General Secretary, Association of Hong Kong Hospital Christian Championship Ministry. Dr. Lam Ching Choi, Chief Executive Officer, Haven of Hope Christian Service. The Right Reverend Dr. Timothy Kong, Diocesan Bishop, Hong Kong Shen Kong Kui, Diocese of Eastern Kowloon. Reverend Dr. Paul Ng, the President of City of David Cultural Center. Our Power 2024 Hong Kong Special, Lead Forward Hong Kong. Our guest for today is Dr. Lam Ching Choi, Chief Executive Officer, Haven of Hope Christian Service. Later in the program, Dr. Lam Ching Choi will share his testimony. Stay tuned. In Romans chapter 13, verse 8, let no debt remain outstanding, except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. Today, the message of Pastor Babashila is to love and to serve our neighbors. Everyone has a different goal for life. But Pastor Babashila advises, actually, in the world we are living in, there are many deprived communities who need help and support. Thus, he teaches us the goal of our life is to love and to serve. Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. Pastor Popishle teaches us, Christian love is not a feeling, but to love and to serve, to take action, to do something for the benefits of other people. When we love and serve, not only we can make an impact to the world, at the same time, we are doing the commandment of Lord Jesus. Let no debt remain outstanding, except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. Our program is bilingual broadcast. Other than our original English, if your TV is equipped with NACAM facility, you can choose to watch our power in original English or Cantonese dubbing.
is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, church family. Welcome, visitors. Thank you so much for joining us today. You know, the Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people. So he is here now with us, and he loves you. Amen. We're believing you're going to leave here changed, that the worship, the message, that everything that is offered here will change your life if you receive it. Let's come into this service with an open heart today. Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit, and we ask in Jesus' name that you'd forgive us of our sins, that you'd transform us, that we would leave here renewed, refreshed, and restored. We ask it all in Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. amen. Turn to the person next to you and say, God loves you, and so do I. In preparation for the message, Romans 13, 8 through 10. Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other commandment there may be are summed up in this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Amen. Good morning, dear friends of Hour of Power. It's Hour of Power again, the broadcast time for the Hong Kong special Leap Forward Hong Kong. This morning, I've invited a good friend of mine for an interview. I've known him for almost 30 years. What impressed me most is he was serving at hospital. We do many charitable projects together. He is the CEO of Haven of Hope Christian Service and a member of the Executive Council, Dr. Lam Ching Choi. Hello, Lam. Hello, Samuel. What you just said immediately reminds me of how we met 30 years ago. Yes, time flies, more than 30 years. Lam, you impressed me very much. He was the CEO or director of the hospital. At that time, he wholeheartedly raised money for the children's ward of the hospital, hoping that sick children can be happy in the ward, to enjoy a more colorful and beautiful environment. In fact, I don't know him. A friend introduced him to me that I helped to be the chairman of the fundraising committee, recruiting a group of Christians, and organized a good concert. Yes. I still remember we'd invited the children's yes. choir. A concert to raise money really impressed me. Lamb also organized many charity. Therefore, the first thing I would like to ask you is, what motivates you to do all these works while you're already busy with administrative work in the hospital? You still organized so many activities to raise funds for the hospital, is that true? In fact, as a doctor, after I believed in Jesus, I felt the calling from God to be a doctor who is different from others, a doctor who cares about the grassroots communities, and a doctor who understands the needs of the grassroots. It's because I grew up in a poor family. I grew up in Cam Tin, living in a mud house. The school I attended is still there, Shun Kung Hoi St. Joseph's Primary School. Oh, yes, good school. <laughs> Not the famous one. It's in the one in Cam Tin. <laughs> yes, it was a village school at that time. The backyards are graves near the hillside. Most of my classmates, just like me, relied on the daily school meal provided by the government. Uh, I was similar to you. Really? Also, yeah, I lived you near Kowloon Walled City. Yes. Also grew up in a grassroots family and later moved to a new district. When I was a child, my parents also received arms. Yes. This is how I believe in the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't believe in the Lord at that time. Until I believed in Jesus when I attended Sheng Kung Hoi Bishop Hall Jubilee School. My school result improved in leaps and bounds after I believed in Jesus. Therefore, when I later attended medical school to become a doctor, I deeply felt that everything was the grace from God. Because of this, after becoming a doctor, I was determined to help the needy people. 
Therefore, when I became a pediatrician at the Evangel Hospital, I witnessed the development of the pediatric ward and later became the chief medical executive. I believe I came to know you at that time. Ah, in the 1990s. Yes. <laughs> so, I saw you in the mission and the spirit of serving the society. Frankly speaking, over the many years, if you turned to private practice, I believe that you would have good income or return. But you have been serving in the public organization, and I can see great dedication for you to serve. You just mentioned that you're a Christian. How did right. you believe in the Lord? You felt inspired when attending your primary school or any special experiences that led you to believe in the Lord? When I attended primary school, I had the opportunity to learn a few Bible stories. But I truly knew Jesus when I attended secondary school. I just mentioned that I grew up in Cam Tin, a village area. At that time, I had to take the secondary school entrance examination. I was thankful that my school results were good at that time. Therefore, I was assigned a secondary school on Oxford Road in Kowloon. I thought my result was good. But since I came from a village school in the New Territories, my English level was not as good as expected. I attended the Jubilee School, which was an English school. Oh, Bishop Hall Jubilee School. Right, Bishop Hall Jubilee School. Therefore, it's hard to adapt for the first three years. Besides, I was staying at my sister's place. She lived in Tokwa Wan. As a boy coming from the village to the city, facing a new environment, I was not acquainted with everything. I remember my classmates said, back to school, let's buy books. I asked, where can we buy books? They said, of course, Mong Kok. I don't know if you remember. At that time. Mong Kok mm -hmm. was the place to buy textbooks. Right, right. I really asked my classmates, where is Mong Kok? <laughs> That kind of feeling slowly caused my feelings of being inferior. Looking back now, I had depression at that time. Therefore, my school results turned bad. For the first three years, my school result was the worst in class. Until the first term in Form 4, suddenly many classmates believed in Jesus. At first, my classmates did not have the courage to preach the gospel to me, nor to invite me to go to church because I had changed already. Sam, you're not sure if you remember bad students were called teddy boys. Teddy boy, I remember. Uh, big pointed collars, yes. big round collars, etc. Bell bottoms. Yes, I wore <laughs> bell bottoms. And my bell bottoms were <laughs> yes, rainbow yes. colored. 25 inches. <laughs> yes, the legs of the trousers were cut loose. Yes. Therefore, my classmates did not have the courage uh -huh. to invite me to go to church. But thankfully, no one is forsaken in the eyes of God. He yes. finally saved me. After I believed in Jesus, my school results continued to improve. Therefore, I could be admitted to the University of Hong Kong. Thank God. What inspired you to believe in the Lord? What special experience led you to believe in the Lord? I remember that I had once asked my teacher this question. What is the meaning of life? Why is it so miserable? Why can't I see the road ahead? What hope is there in life? I was very lost. I was not entirely bad, though I was a teddy boy. Back then, I intentionally went to the Kowloon Library. I tried to read books on Buddhism, Confucianism, and a lot of philosophy. I wanted to find answers for this question. If there is a God, why can't I see him? Later, I went to church. A sentence from the pastor changed my life forever. He said, It is not us to seek God, but this God who finds me. I suddenly realized, This God is actually very great. An insignificant figure like me is unable to understand this God. Only when this God reveals himself to us, so that we can know him, at that time, I was attracted by this Bible verse. I then decided to believe in Jesus. The miracles I experienced were just as I shared earlier. In fact, it happened after I believed in Jesus. Oh, yes. I studied medicine, but actually, I want to pursue science. 
At the moment I believed in Jesus, suddenly what the teacher taught about all the complex theories in chemistry and physics, etc., I suddenly understood. I witnessed my school results improving every week. I was shocked at that feeling. A silly guy could later comprehend the theory of physics and got a good result. It's indeed a miracle that God performed in my life. Even now I am a doctor. I don't understand what's happening in my brain. I think after you believe in the Lord, you can rely on Him in everything. Coming to the Lord is our ever-present help. Yes. Would encounter be difficulties, but yes. the Lord would be your strength, help, yes. reliance, fortress, yes. refuge. Life becomes completely ah, yes. different. With His attitude towards life, your whole yes. life would be different. God is yes. amazing. I believe He will make a way for you in many situations. Please share with us, you believed in the Lord for many years with outstanding achievements in career and holding many public offices, including serving the elderly. Yes including environmental protection work and many other areas. What are the career challenges with so many public offices? How does faith help you get through it? Or how does your faith help you to serve better in public office? In fact, there are challenges every day. I have been working in Haven of Hope Christian Service for more than 30 years. Since this organization is bold in taking on challenges, facing the challenges posed in society so that we are able to reform continuously and to serve better. Later, when I held a public office in the government, my expectation for myself was, as I just shared, I believe that God has set a path for me when I was young. Why did he perform this miracle on me? Not only did he save me, he also made me a doctor a doctor who grew up in a poor village. I believe that he wants to have a doctor in Hong Kong who understands the feeling of poor people. Today I still have vivid memories because I experience that, not sure if there is rice to eat tomorrow. In fact, not only was I under the impact of material poverty, but also psychologically having a sense of inferiority, not believing in myself. I didn't even believe that someone in society cares about me. I remember before I believed in the Lord, I had depression. I really thought that none of my classmates would care about me, but only make fun of me. But that wasn't the case. There was proof. In this world, people around you actually are willing to help. As long as we are willing to open our hearts, to share our needs and feelings, Later, there was a secondary schoolmate. He was not very rich and lived nearby in Sampo Kong. He had invited me to live in his house for two years. He slept in the bottom bunk and I slept in the top bunk. Actually, as long as we are willing to open up our lives, people in society are willing to help us. I have held every public office with this mindset hoping to help everyone in the grassroots community in Hong Kong. Either they are children or elderly. So, to bring them help and care from society and let them know there are people willing to help. But many times poor people, because of low self-esteem, do not believe in themselves and people around, preventing them from getting help. Therefore, for every challenge in my public office, I hope that I can break through. Yes, sometimes there are different classes in society. People from different walks of life have different needs. So that sometimes when formulating social policy, the needs of the grassroots may not be fully understood. So I want to position myself as a bridge. Let decision makers and people with resources in society can understand the needs of the grassroots and get the social resources to flow into the grassroots community some more. And those in need. Give more to needy people. There will be many challenges, but I always remember one thing. 
I have learned in the job over the years. Actually, as management level, of course I need to study management courses and I need management books. I had further studied at Harvard University twice. Each time I finished a course, I had an impressive experience. The management principles taught by professors with high academic status, actually, they're mentioned yes. in the Bible. The Bible is the best management book. Yes. Teach us to do good management. Therefore, I hope that when I work at Haven of Hope, this organization to manage with biblical principles. I also hope that for every public office I hold, my decisions and every step taken can be based on biblical principles. It's been very effective over the years. The Bible indeed is the truth. Many management books are based on biblical principles. Yes. Such as servant leadership yes. or management yes. proverbs, and also to manage yes. finance with biblical principles. These books are very good. The Bible gives us many principles. For example, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. Our founder of Hour of Power, Dr. Robert Schuller, had this Bible verse. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Many Bible verses are like this verse. Can you encourage us with the word of God how to rely on Jesus when we comfort with low self-esteem so that we can move forward with faith. There's a very important teaching in the Bible regarding the sense of inferiority and self-value. Self-value is not based on one's own intelligence. Self-value is because God creates us. Amen. We are made in the image of God. We are made. Right. When I am working at Haven of Hope, it is the service users of Haven of Hope that taught me to understand. Because in Haven of Hope, other than serving the elderly, we also serve people with intellectual disabilities. We have a special school for children with severe intellectual disabilities. In their lives, I can see God loves them just the same. The IQ of children with severe intellectual disabilities is only 20 to 30. They may only live for 10 to 20 years. But God loves them the same. His values and my values are the same. Therefore, friends of Hour of Power, if you accidentally fall into low self-esteem, we need to ask the Lord for help. Yes. Because each of us is made in the image of God. Everything is good with the image of God. When you rely on God and come in front of God, He will be with you, protect you and guide you. Will there be any difficulties that cannot be resolved when we come before God? Impossible. Impossible. Second, you are absolutely right about being a bridge. This reminds me of a Bible verse, to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Yes. Whether you're a politician or someone in a high position, if having such motivation, I believe it will be of great help to society. Yes. You are now a member of the Executive Council. Please share your experience in this respect. How I bring the voice of the grassroots into the decision procedure in the government, I hope that I can play this role well. Because I firmly believe that in the Bible, Jesus is a good example. Jesus came to the world to get in touch with the most deprived communities. Today we call yes. it deprived community. Right. Back then were the beggars, sick people and prostitutes, or even rich people such as tax collectors. But this was looked down by society at that time. However, Jesus was willing to get close to them. Even though I am a member of the Executive Council, I hope that in my daily work, I can reach out and meet people in the grassroots communities. Learn from the old lady who picks up trash, from the cleaning workers to see how they work diligently, to help our city. Therefore, back then, when we promoted aging in place, it is for those who are willing to stay at home and have children to take care of them. Then they can stay at home. We would rather send our staff to their homes to help them. We don't want to move them to nursing homes for no reason. 
The change of this policy faced a lot of political pressure at that time, but I insisted on this principle. We must listen to the opinions and voices of the elderly who are the service users. Therefore, I visited many elderly people back then, 18 districts visiting each district. We must listen to their voices. I was having lunch with a friend who works at the university. We talked about the Joy U card launched by the government. They think this is very good. Yes. Helping many grassroots elderly yes. to go out more often. 65 years yes. old, over 60, to go out. Uh, two dollars. To take MTR can be cheaper. Two dollars, no need to stay at home all the time. Yes. When they are happier, less chance to get sick yes. will lessen the demand for public medical services. Yes. You also mentioned about being the chairman of the Advisory Committee on Mental Health. That's correct. Please share with us, because this is very important, especially if the mental health of the people today is facing significant yes. challenges. The numbers are quite astonishing. The lowest is one-tenth. The most is one for every four people. Therefore, when facing such a big challenge, how to mobilize people from different walks of life and sectors in society to work together to support mental health. We are doing quite well for the young people. Due to many challenges, we also undergo a lot of changes. In the future, with the impact of Samuel in the workplace, we hope that different enterprises, both large and small, to promote mental health-friendly workplace environment it means encouraging every employee, whether the boss or staff, to care about each other's mental health. I agree. Absolutely agree. In addition, faith can greatly support our mental health. Yes, absolutely. As the Bible says, a cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. Those who believe in Jesus always have joy because they have peace. Yes. When you have joy and peace, mental health problems could be significantly reduced. Yes, absolutely. Our faith is actually very down to earth. I often tell people that faith will directly impact both our physical and mental health. Faith also encourages us to exercise our bodies. Yes. Therefore, we have to exercise. Agree. Our bodies need to exercise, but our brains also need to exercise to make an impact on our mental health. Yes. Therefore, we have to have a good social life. Become a Christian after believing in Jesus and go to church. We have fellowship. All of this will help our mental health. Therefore, we encourage our friends of Hour of Power, if you are a Christian, preach the gospel. If you are not yet a Christian, believe in Jesus and go to church, definitely yes. your mental health would improve a lot. Finally, please encourage us in your life experience. What Bible verses have helped you in your life the most? Recently, I am studying the book of Hebrews at church. I like Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 to 2 very much. These two Bible verses are familiar to everyone because chapter 11 tells us about the great men of faith in the Old Testament. Then, in chapter 12, verse 1, it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, thus we suggest to do one thing, that is, run with perseverance the race that is set before us. In English, it means, we'll finish the race with perseverance. God has a plan for each of us, and chooses the path especially for us. Therefore, we must have a heart of perseverance, to finish the race that God has set before us. These two Bible verses also highlight two things. They remind us on this path how to run the race better. The first is to lay aside the sin and distractions that entangle us. The second thing is in the second verse. We need to fix our eyes on Jesus. Yes. I think these two Bible verses are very meaningful. It can encourage myself, even though you and I have the Joy U card already. <laughs> but before us, we have a race to run. I believe God will continue to make it for us, a path specially made for us to run. Yes. We long to walk in the will of God. Yes. Lam, our theme for 2024 is Leap Forward Hong Kong. 
Hong Kong is facing a lot of challenges. Economic downturn, slowdown, recession, the financial and stock markets underperform and are facing challenges. Do you have any advice from the point of our faith that you think would help viewers to encourage us to leap forward Hong Kong? I think the theme Leap Forward Hong Kong for 2024 is very good. If we have faith, knowing that God gives us faith and hope, as long as we believe in this true God, no matter how difficult the path is, we can get through it. I hope that the entire society in Hong Kong can have faith in ourselves and have hope for the future. And this faith comes from our belief in the Lord Jesus. You remind me of a Bible verse, suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character, hope, and hope does not put us yes. to shame. No matter how difficult it yes. is, God will lead yes. us to get through it. Thank you, Samuel. It gave me an opportunity to share the gospel from Jesus. This gospel affects my whole life. It affects me every day. I am very thankful. Amen. Finally, we encourage brothers, sisters, and friends, fix your eyes on Jesus. You will then have an abundant life. Thank you, Dr. Lam Ching Choi, for sharing with us. We hope that in the future, you would come again to share with us. Sure, definitely. And share your latest experiences and insights with our brothers and sisters of Hour of Power. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. No matter who you are, would you stand with us? We're going to say this creed together as we do every week. A lot of standing and sitting today, but we want, you, we want to keep you healthy. Here we go. Let's say this together. I'm not what I do. I'm not what I have. I'm not what people say about me. I am the beloved of God. It's who I am. No one can take it from me. I don't have to worry. I don't have to hurry. I can trust my friend Jesus and share his love with my neighbor. Thanks, you can be seated. I want to begin by giving you an opportunity, and that is to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. It is the best decision you can make. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Now that was said, and it's been written down. You can choose to believe it or choose to deny it. It's your choice. But if you believe that, Choose Christ, choose to follow him. 
And it's something to Jesus' teaching that will completely transform your business, your relationships. And I'll get there in just a minute, but first let's set some ground rules. Number one, I believe, and I hope you do too, that your philosophy dictates the course of your life. Your philosophy is the map and the compass of your life. It tells you where you're going. And everybody views the world through a different lens. You probably know somebody with this type of lens and that type of lens. Many people walk through life full of self-pity, and that's their philosophy. Many people walk through life blaming this person or that person or the government or their boss. Many people say, I hope, I hope, I hope, but nothing ever changes. But perhaps it's those words, I hope, and that alone, that's keeping them where they are. They hope that things will change. They hope their boss will be more generous. This happens to, with their coworker, or this happens with their spouse, or if they get married, then things will change. But very often, nobody says, when I change, things will change. And boy, that's the answer, isn't it? To understand that life changes when I change. And I can change today. Nothing is stopping me. Nothing's stopping me from understanding. Nothing's stopping me from learning. Nothing's stopping me from saying no to this and yes to that. I can choose today to become a new person. And I can choose to have a new philosophy. But I want you to hear this, and I know it will transform your life. And here's what it says. Your achievement in life is equal to the impact of your service. Now you read that and you go, oh, that's not a big deal. Yeah, serve more. No, no, no. I want you to know that your achievement in life is equal to the impact of your service. We see this at play right away in the early church. The early church springs up in the middle of this famous empire, the Roman Empire, wow. Lasted 800 years, conquered most of Europe, North Africa, big, big chunks of the Middle East, powerful. But Rome was all about glory, all about the trophies, all about the money. And because of that, the little people in Rome really were tossed to the side. Rome said things like, we don't want orphans. We don't want sick people. We don't want widows. We don't want old people unless they're rich. These are the types of things Rome would say. And when the church was springing up, it had a new idea. Your value is not based on your glory. Your value is based on being a child of God. So the church, the early church in the first, second, third centuries, great history written on it called When Children Became People. Good, good line. That the church said, give us your children. We'll take them. Give us your poor people. Give us your sick people. Give us your old people. Give us your abandoned people. We'll take them. Give us your slaves that are no good anymore to you. Don't kill them. Don't throw them away. Just give us, and they will be our brothers and our sisters. They will be honored among us. It was not only that they were going to serve these abandoned people, but show these people that they have something to give to, that they have gifts to. I mean, isn't that part of the gift of, of taking someone in, is showing them, you can do something for this community. It may not be a big thing like this person over here, but we know you still have something to offer this community. See, that's the gift, is not only to be served, but to learn that you have something to offer. And you do. Boy, do you have something to offer. And this is true of every organization, every team, is that when they are in decline, you can see that they're not serving any longer. They're not making an impact any longer. Their products don't have an impact any longer. Their people are not working with each other and serving one another any longer. And that's what begins the decline. You want a great marriage? A great marriage is made up of two people who serve one another. It's really not that hard. You want a great team? A great team is a group of people who serve one another and serve a greater goal. So here's my point, is really for all of us, many people think that the goal of life is to relax. The goal of life is to rest or to have fun or to get a break. But really the goal of life is to make an impact. Really the goal of life is to, is to have a service that you offer the world that in large part you enjoy giving that makes a big impact. That's one of the big goals of life. And we can say that to be of service is really the nectar of life. That when you feel like your service is making an impact to your world or your country or your family, well, you want to wake up in the morning and do it again. And that brings us to our scripture for the morning. Romans chapter 13. 
Romans 13, verse 8, Paul says this, Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other command there may be are summed up in this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Now, what debt is he talking about? He said there's a debt outstanding that we all have. What's that debt? And how is it? It's, we know, he says it's filled by loving your neighbor, but why is it a debt? Because Christ first loved us. When we were a mess, when we were a train wreck, when we had it all wrong, when we, did all, when we hurt all sorts of people, we lied, when we messed up, all of that, guess who still loved us? God loved us through it all, and he gave his son's life for our sake that we could be at peace with God. Now that is a big debt, but God doesn't say pay it back, he says pay it forward. He says you received my love, now here's what I want you to do, love one another. I guess we pay it back by loving God too, but the point remains, he asks us to love each other, to care for each other. So what does it mean, a lot of confusion about love? Here's three things that define Christian love. First one, you probably know I'm gonna say it, Christian love is not a feeling. Christian love is a verb. It's something you do for the benefit of others. Love is care for human good. This is why you can love your enemies. Love is care for human good. In other words, love is service. Okay, number two, what is Christian love? Christian love is about becoming a loving person. Now, we can't mess this one up. Many people think that Christian love is forced. It's like a light bulb. It's something you shine on people. But no, it's someone you become. Christian love is like becoming a light bulb in the sense that you're transformed and everywhere you go, you bring this, can we use a modern California word? You bring a vibe. You bring a vibe with you. You bring this sense that people just go, wow, she's a loving person. Maybe they can't always put a finger on it, but there's something about you that emanates kindness, compassion, love, service. And so instead of making an, an effort all the time, you're sort of bringing something that God's already baked into the pie. And, uh, and that's the kind of love that, 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 that God wants us to have. Number three, Christian love, and this is so important, Christian love is something that God does in us first. Never forget that. I look around at the world and so many Christians look at it with judgment. But what I see is a world of people with their arms out and nobody's catching them. And so what a great moment it is in life when you are led of the Spirit and you catch somebody by those arms and you, you bring them into the house of God. You, sh you, you encourage them in some way. You touch them in some way. You pray for them in some way. You serve them in some way. You're not trying to always convert them or trying to get something out of them, but just because you love them and believe that the Lord will do the rest. Well, anyway, uh, Christian love is something God does in us first. So here's another way of saying it. If we want to love people, find a need and fill it. You want to make an impact? Find a need and fill it. Finding a need and filling it is a, is a discovery. It's getting out there and understanding that people have needs and that there's something in me that can help them achieve whatever it is that they're lacking. So you want success in academia? Do you want success in your church or in your relationships? Do you want success in your business? Success in your Christian walk? Then find a need and feel it. Learn to serve people. Make a difference in people's lives. Your achievement is equal to the impact of your service. So your achievement in life is equal to the impact, which is the quality and quantity of your service. We got it? The Bible says it plainly, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. It's just, it's written, it's true. What we dwell on day and, day and night becomes our life. Everything that you have in life is the result of your thinking. So the first thing we wanna fix is the way we think. And here's why especially this is true in service. You ever, a lot of us, we are by ourselves and we're thinking, we're thinking about our husband or wife, we're thinking about our colleague, we're thinking about this, that, and, that. and a lot of times we get all hot and bothered because we've been spinning our wheels, and then we go to serve with gritted teeth, but they can feel something else, and they're like, 
are they mad at me? Are they, they really want to be serving me? Do I need to pay them back? Should I, or like, should I tip? Did I not tip them? Should I tip this person? You see, when you, it, when you, the attitude is really like 80% of the service. I think it was Maya Angelou who said, people are not gonna remember what you said. People are not gonna remember what you did. They're gonna remember how you made them feel. And so your attitude that you bring into your service is all what's happening up here when you're not serving them. So take every thought captive, guard your thinking, and, and tend to thoughts that are loving, positive, and good, and you'll bring that into your service. The number one thing that's destroying love and service today in our country, in our schools and everything, is fear. It's fear. Fear is the greatest enemy of love. The Bible says that perfect love casts out fear. So here's the, here's the solution. This is always the solution to fear. Take action. Fear is something that happens when we think. Just do a thing. Do something. Here's a choice you have every single day to serve or not to serve. Here's a choice you have every single day to take action or do nothing. Here's a choice you have every single day to expand your life or to shrink your life. And it all happens here. Take action. All right, second thing. This is probably the most important of the four. It's not about whether or not I serve. It's about how others experience my service. Friends, please hear this one. It's more about what people experience from you. Gosh, as a pastor praying and counseling people, how often I've met a, a man who is completely shocked when his wife comes and serves him divorce papers. He thought, I thought it was going pretty good. Not amazing, but it was fine. Or a woman is completely blindsided because her husband has an affair. And this is because the way we show love is not the way everyone else receives love. We all show and receive love in different ways. And so this is, this is a major problem in marriages, but this is not just true in marriage. Everybody's different. Every single person in here has a different thumbprint, different string of DNA, and we all have different stories and experiences. So your customers, your team, your kids, your neighbors, they all have needs. They all have needs waiting to be discovered. And if you can discover those needs, you will 10x your impact. There's no extra work required other than this, understanding the heart of the person you're wanting to serve. If you get that right, you're gonna get it all right. All right, here's a number three. Number three, most obvious thing. Can we just say, I just wanna say this, there are people here who serve and serve and serve and are just being walked all over. We'll just say this. I love these people so much. I gotta say this, you heard it from your pastor. You are limited. You're limited, okay? In life, there are some people, you're probably thinking of one right now, I call them black holes. There are people in this world that no matter how much you serve them, they will suck out all of the life and time that you have. And if you give in to those people, you won't have the time and the energy to serve the other people who really need you. So don't be worried about putting up healthy boundaries. And finally, number four, don't forget Jesus tells us to love our enemies. But there is a real practical benefit to serving your enemies to serving your competitors, and even your boss. Imagine that, yeah, you have to even love your boss, it's crazy. Never badmouth your competitors if you're in business or in sports. It makes you look weak and petty. Just don't do it, trust me. And yes, you should love and serve and respect your boss. You filled out an application, you pushed it across the table, you made certain promises to that boss that you haven't kept. You said, you sh showed up that first day excited to work. You prayed, you asked your friends to pray. You t told everybody you were hoping you can get this job. And this boss took a big risk on you, especially if he owns the business. He's got to raise enough money to not only pay for everything else, but pay your salary. And get another job if it's that bad. Nobody's forcing you. The Bible is so clear on this issue. That's why I'm almost being mean about it. It is so crystal clear that we have to, res at the very least, respect our bosses and, and are called to serve them. And trust me, there is a benefit to it. 
And finally, yes, we're even called to love and serve our enemies as Christians. Here's why, and this is the biggest thing. Because when you love your enemies, you stop blaming them for your problems. When you love your enemies, you stop blaming them for your problems. And that's when everything will change in your life. Everything. It's not your boss's fault. It's not your enemy's fault. It's not your toxic relative's fault. It's not the government's fault. It's not interest rate's fault. You can change today and everything will change for you. Judgment cuts off your life from all sorts of opportunity. Just get rid of it. Forgive and love your enemies. So what do you want from life? You want to be more happy in life? You want to have a more full life? You want to wake up excited in the morning? You want to have more friends? You want to grow? You want to achieve more? You want to please God with your life? Understand that your level of achievement of life is equal to the impact of your service. Father, we ask that you teach us and show us how to make an impact with our lives. I pray first that every single person in this room would know that this sermon is for them, that they would see the special ways in which they can serve and make a difference. We love you, God. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Thanks for watching our power and your support to us. Our Power 2024 Hong Kong Special, Lead Forward Hong Kong. Our guests for this year, Reverend Dr. Joshua Chen, the General Secretary of Hong Kong Gospel Festival. Miss Lucilla Leung, the former headmistress of St. Paul's Coeducational College Primary School. Reverend Nan Chi Ying, Honorary General Secretary. Association of Hong Kong Hospital Christian Championship Ministry Dr. Lam Cheng Choi Chief Executive Officer Haven of Hope Christian Service The Right Reverend Dr. Timothy Kong Diocesan Bishop Hong Kong Shen Kong Hui Diocese of Eastern Kowloon Reverend Dr. Paul Ng The President of City of David Cultural Centre our guest for next week will be the Right Reverend Dr. Timothy Kong, Diocesan Bishop, Hong Kong Shen Kong Hui, Diocese of Eastern Kowloon. Stay tuned. In Romans chapter 13, verse 8, let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. Today, the message of Pastor Papa Shilaris to love and to serve our neighbours. Everyone has a different goal for life. But Pastor Bob Schiller advises, actually, in the world we are living in, there are many deprived communities who need help and support. Thus, he teaches us, the goal of our life is to love and to serve. Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. Pastor Popishle teaches us, Christian love is not a feeling, but to love and to serve, to take action, to do something for the benefits of other people. When we love and serve, not only we can make an impact to the world, at the same time, we are doing the commandment of Lord Jesus. Let no debt remain outstanding, except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. Our Power This Motivational TV program is broadcast weekly on TVP Pearl Channel. Every Saturday at 10 a.m. in the morning and every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. And you can also watch online simultaneously on My TV Super or www.hourofpower.org.hk. Thanks for joining. God loves you and see you next week on TVP Pearl. Join us again next week as Pastor Bobby Schuler brings you a message of hope on the Hour of Power.
and Pastor Bobby would love to hear from you. Just write us. Until next week, remember to let your hopes, not your hurts, shape your future.